Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the week that we've had, Lord, in thanking you and uh, having all the th- the gifts that's been given to us and thanking you for that. Lord, we want to thank you today for Dale. Thank you for the gifts that uh, has been given to him, Lord, and speaking to us about hope. Lord, we ask you to be with our chrysalis that's going on today, Lord, and be with those youth. Lift all those prayers up. In your son's name we pray. Amen. I hope no one needs to remind you uh, that after you see uh, the sanctuary decorated, uh, that it is Advent season, uh, begins today, and it's also Happy New Year. Did you know that? Let you in on a little clue. Today is the first day of the Christian calendar. It always begins on Advent. We start with uh, preparation for the birth of the Christ child. So, um, but, but needless to say, uh, it's not quite yet Christmas. There's some preparation time. Um, someone said to me in the hall, and I'm not going to look in any particular direction, but somebody said, I'm going to slow it down if I can. Well, you know, it's going to come. I mean, it's come quick enough any re- already uh, from a couple of months ago till today, and we know that uh, the time is short until we celebrate the birth of the Christ child. In those, um, those couple of weeks that we have, I want to share a, a series of sermons on some of the words that are on the Advent wreath. Um, there'll be one Sunday that'll be preempted, but it's still a song of joy as the choir will share uh, lessons and carols that third Sunday. But I want to look at at the words hope, peace, joy, and love. This morning is a a wish for hope. Now I'm sure somewhere along the line uh, already, if not, someone's asked you, uh, well, what do you want for Christmas? Or do you have your your Christmas list ready? Now, if you're like I am over a a few years, I have seen uh, several lists Uh, I have been surprised at some of the things that are on a list, and it makes no difference how old my son gets. I'm still surprised at some of the things that make the list. But um, but anyway, you and I know as a part of that, sometimes in life, the things that we desire, uh, we've been around long enough to know that if we seek them, uh, somewhere along the line, it happens. And the question I would ask this morning is, a part of that is, um, uh, what will you do in the Advent season? Advent is a a time and an opportunity to to prepare for the coming of the Christ child. It's sorting through our souls and separating the things we want from the things we deeply need. Separating the things we want from the things that we deeply need. Advent is, if we can, or if we will, ask for what is most important for our lives. It's also a time we, we can say, uh, what, what is it that we really need? Or what would it be the, most deepest, the deepest longing of our heart for God to give us in this Advent and Christmas season? We think about those things and... Uh, you know, I don't need to tell you, that the Christmas rush is on. Some people think it started, well, Black Friday, which started on Thursday, uh, but really started long before that, didn't it? Do you know the origins of Black Friday? It's not for the merchants. It started originally in the the early to mid-60s in Philadelphia by the police department. Traffic was heavy. It was also a time when uh, there was the Army-Navy football game, and the police thought if they would put out a promotion of Black Friday that people would stay at home. Huh. What happened? What happened? Now we know it uh, is uh, promoted by merchants as moving from the red into the black for their profit. And if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we can get caught up in some of those things. Someone said there's a formula for getting through uh, the Christmas season. 
Do you want to know what it is, how you get through it? This is what one person said, who happened to be a psychologist, said, uh, uh, put your mind in neutral and just go where you are shoved. Long lines, traffic lines, a lot of things that are happening as a part of that, and yet sometimes uh, we just get to the place that we give in because that's all we can do. But I want to encourage you, don't do that. Please don't just give in. Take time to savor the moment. Take time to enjoy the Advent season and Christmas. Take time to celebrate it. Take time to learn from it. This past Monday night in our ministry leaders team meeting, I shared a devotion that says sometimes it's important for us to listen to people. He was saying also as a church, it's important to listen to your community. When you listen to people, and if you're following God, sometimes you can hear God better. And we need to listen for God. In the midst of that in our lives, the passage of Scripture has something to say to us about, uh, about this hope and listening and understanding. I want to add one passage and just share a little bit. But it would come from Isaiah, the sixth chapter. And in verse 8, uh, we hear the words uh, from God saying, Who shall we send and who will go for us? And you remember the words that Isaiah said? He said, here I am, Lord, send me. And then there's Mary. But remember Isaiah's situation, probably not a lot different than where we are in this day. Isaiah, uh, uh, Isaiah proclaimed to the people of Israel because they were in trouble. They had left and gone far away from the covenant God that they knew. God was looking for a prophet to proclaim and to call back, and he knew that the only real remedy was a Savior. He knew that, and he began to proclaim it as a part of that. Just as we heard in the Advent reading about the waiting and the hope and all that God had done in the midst of that, but yet Isaiah proclaimed that message, part of it. Mary is a little bit different than what we see on the Christmas pageants and the Christmas cards. Everything just looks peacefully and just wonderful, doesn't it, when you see that on a Christmas card or a Christmas pageant. But yes, it wasn't that way. You know it wasn't that way. You know Mary's story is a part of that. Think of it as a part of all the things that were going on. Whispers behind her back, false accusations, raised eyebrows, gossip, and all kinds of family pressures. It wasn't easy. And then to think that she had to journey to Bethlehem and in a state of pregnancy, which was not an easy task. But the scripture we read from Luke's gospel says that an angel of the Lord came to Mary and said, you have found favor with God. You will conceive a child and the child will be born and you shall name him Jesus because he will save his people, one of the other gospel writers says. It's a part of our understanding, part of that. It was a tough situation, but Mary and also Isaiah had faith and hope. They had faith and hope. On my wish list is a longing for hope for all of us. A longing for hope. A renewed hope. A renewed courage. A renewed determination that with our hope in Christ that things can be different. Where is hope found? Hope often, especially biblical hope, is found in barrenness. It's found in emptiness. It's found in darkness. When everything else seems hopeless, you and I can remember in the midst of life, Jesus said these words, lift up your heads for your redemption is drawing near. The weeks of Advent bring about a lot of things of all kinds. It brings about, and I'll be bold to say this, you may think it, you may not say it, but it brings about a phony hope it brings about a phony cheer and phony happiness when it's all wrapped up in parties and lines and all sorts of sounds and commotions apart. Because when Christmas is over, what happens? Everybody goes back to the anxiety and the frustration and the fears unless they have the hope of this Christ child. Unless we have that hope. When we share in that, we can recognize it sometimes even in the silence. The silence that you and I need to find in this season of Advent.
to find time to be alone with God. In the early service this morning, uh, I mean, you could have you heard a pin drop on this carpet when I asked them to pray, and I said, I had my moment this morning just being quiet, just being still, maybe in darkness, but the real darkness and the hard part is that we face that which is in our own lives. We face the darkness. We face the sin. We face those things that are that are broken and bent out of shape. And in that silence, we can find that when we come face to face, our hope is found in Jesus Christ. That's what we're called to proclaim as the body of Christ. Hope comes. And it's that sense of faith that allows us, no matter how dark and how difficult the moment can be, is that we can find that the world is still incomplete. Think about it. If we know Christ, the world is still incomplete. History is still unfinished. And the future is still open-ended. Do you have that kind of hope? Are you willing to look deep on the inside? into the darkness and the brokenness of our lives and find that as we prepare again for the coming of the Christ. Hope also comes uh, when we listen for God's voice. Isaiah and Mary were tuned in to God. Now, as bad as I'd hate to say, they had, uh, they had um, ears of faith. Do you remember me saying a couple of weeks ago in the series on building a better life that we also had to have the eyes of faith to see God's vision and God's plan. So now we have ears and eyes to be able to see God, to be able to hear God in the midst of that. God still speaks today. I hope you know that. God still speaks today. And sometimes he speaks in unexpected ways and offers us gifts of grace when we least expect it. If you'll be watching... If you'll watch somewhere through the Advent season, you'll find God will, will come in an unusual way and you'll find a blessing that you didn't even have on your agenda. It wasn't even on your radar. But if we're listening, we can hear God's voice. But the sad thing is a lot of people don't. They've let all of the things from the outside, the noise of the world, crowd out the voice of God. And yet as we continue moving, we find things different. I heard a story uh, that I'd heard some time back, and it just fit. It was a family was uh, experiencing the holidays. And uh, this uh, particular holiday was, uh, was going to be different because there was a new grandbaby in the house. And guess what? Uh, that grandbaby kind of took uh, the show from part of that. The baby was passed from one relative to another relative to another relative to another relative and then pass back through those relatives. And the baby was exhausted. Mom took the baby off to a bedroom and, and put in a nice little bassinet, and the baby went off to sleep without any problem. The rest of the family gathered down, had their meal, and after their, their meal, they, uh, some of them went to watch one of the football games, and the others went over to Conversation Corner. You know, that's those who don't care about football, and they were talking about a little everything. All kinds of noise and commotion going on. And then one of them noticed that mom, the new mom, had kind of slipped out away from everything that was going on. Where do you think she was going? You already know, don't you? She had heard the cry of her baby. And she went to see. Because see, she was listening. She was listening because that was her priority. Should it not be a priority for us, maybe in the Advent season, to be listening? Listening to those who are around us. Listening for God's voice, how it may come. It might come through one of the Christmas carols. It might come through something you see when somebody reaches out in an act of love. And all of a sudden, you've been blessed. But God can speak, and not always with words. But he can speak to our hearts. I wish for you that kind of hope that listens to God's voice. Also, hope comes when we obey God's will. The original Greek, uh, the word uh, for faith is pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. -I -I and its definition is believing obedience. Believing obedience. 
There's a difference between obedience and believing obedience. You remember the little boy? His mom told him to sit down and he would sit down for a minute, stand back up, kept going back and forth, back and forth. Who's going to win? I saw that uh, the other night at a ball game. Dad said to the little boy, he had the back of a chair at the ball game just swinging it like this. And he said, now, you need to decide, do you want to stand up or do you want to sit down? But on the other one, mom trying to get him to sit, sit down. And finally, the little boy said, I'll sit down on the outside, but on the inside, I'm standing up. You know, let's just be honest with one another. I think even as Christians, sometimes that's what we do. We know what God says and we want to obey, but we don't believe it enough that we'll do it without kicking and screaming. There was nothing tentative or compromising about Isaiah or Mary. Isaiah said, here I am, Lord, send me. Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. And basically, was she saying, do with me what you will. It was that sense of obeying God's word and God's will in the midst of that. And sometimes we are those who are maybe almost at that place. I shared this illustration, and, and most of you have heard it from the P, uh, Peanuts cartoon. Uh, end of baseball season, and you know, the baseball teams now are looking at all their yearly statistics and making plans for next year. But in the Peanuts cartoon, Linus was a statistician. Linus was a statistician. He got all the numbers together and went to Charlie Brown. And he said, Charlie Brown, he said, I've got some statistics to tell you about our ball team. He said, we have 12, in 12 games, we almost scored a run. He said, in nine of those games, the other team almost didn't score before they had an out. And he said, Charlie Brown, you know, Lucy's in right field. And Lucy almost caught three fly balls this year. And then Linus looked at Charlie Brown and he said, Charlie Brown, we led the league in almost. You know, we almost at times follow and obey God's will, but not quite, not completely. But if we want to find that hope, we know that God's will for us is good and that what God calls us to he will lead us through. He'll be there to empower us and to do the things that we would not even think or dream that we could do, but we might walk in obedience. But Mary and Isaiah had total and complete trust and obedience. And no matter how things seemed on the outside, they were confident. They were confident that God would walk with them. And the last thing that brings hope is that come, hope comes when we trust God's power. When we trust God's power. Isaiah and Mary maybe should uh, uh, set an example for us again. They took one step at a time. They took one day at a time. And they trusted God for the future. Look at it. Both of them. One experienced the birth of the Christ child. Isaiah hoped for and never saw in his lifetime. And all of those who held on to faith in God, all that they longed for and all that they hoped for, they never got to see. And we're seeing on the other side of that, that Christ came as a baby and lived and died. And we've experienced that and we pass that on from one generation to the other. And if we don't pass it on, then hope dies. But God is our hope for the future that we can trust him, and we know that. Stories told of an old riverboat captain who served on the Mississippi River for 35 years. One day a passenger came up to him and said, uh, I guess you know where all the, the rocks and the sandbars are in the river. And the captain said, no, I don't, but I know where the deep water is. Isaiah and Mary knew the deep things of God. And sometimes, maybe for us, maybe for me, and maybe I'm just saying this, maybe sometimes our faith and our trust is a little shallow. And sometimes we hit rocky places or we hit a sandbar and we get, we get stuck or something uh, becomes broken as a part of our lives. But when we know the deep things of God, that no matter in the darkest moment, 
the darkest hour and the most difficult thing, that he is our hope and he is our refuge. What's on your Christmas wish list? What do you really want for Christmas? Remember, there's another line after that. What do you really need? What do you really need from God in this Advent season? And will you seek it with your whole heart? My wish, again, for all of us is that uh, we'll find those things. And it begins with having hope. Hope of a brighter day, of a glorious future, and to know that God is faithful, even as today. All of the noise that seems to be pushing Christ out of Christmas, more than bringing Christ into Christmas, can only happen when you and I are truly followers of the Christ. Our closing hymn is, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, and I want you to hear a part of the words